History Highlights Memorable Moments from the Council Bluffs Metro Area Past Presented by the Historical Society of Potawatomi County Early artists of the West performed a very important service on the fading frontier, documenting what it was like for those of us that came along later. But there was a catch. Most artists working in the United States in the 19th century were trained in the artistic conventions of the time, so their creations are often skewed more toward being artistic at the expense of reality. However, in Council Bluffs in Omaha, we're the lucky exception. Thanks to railroad surveyor Granville Dodge and his cook, who also happened to be an artist. Unlike most Western artists of the time, George Simon's style was to paint what he saw. Those drawings are absolutely above scrutiny. I mean, they are impeccable in their truth and honesty. In an era when Western scenes were embellished and romanticized, Simons did not do it. The other early frontier artists were not nearly as reliable for their accuracy. He would take a scene and he would basically want to illustrate that scene like a photographer. He'd want to document it uh, for the sake of learning what that was there. We could see what the area looked like in the 1850s and beyond. George Simons first came to Council Bluffs on an expedition with Grenville Dodge. We have no idea how they met. Uh, we just know that they that he was hired as a cook for the party. When Dodge is working on the Trans-Iowa Railroad, and apparently was a good cook. Grenville Dodge discovered George Simon's artistic talent as he was sketching in a scene of their campsite across the wilderness of Iowa with the survey team. I think what's really neat about George Simon's is it allows us to engage in some time travel. It takes us into a very believable place that, that was here and was then. When Dodge and Simon's arrived, Council Bluffs was the most active frontier town in the West. Gold had been discovered in Wyoming and California, and the town was full of 49ers that were headed west. Mormons were still arriving from the east. This was a gathering point for everyone traveling west. There were still Native American people here from when the Potawatomi's, Ottawa's, and Chippewa's were located here. So this was perhaps one of the most exciting and active frontier towns in middle America. He drew a view looking up Council Bluffs, the street going left to right up to where Broadway Methodist Church is now. That was the Ocean Wave Saloon. And so he drew carefully each and every building all along the century block and beyond. And so to draw those in perspective and to not make any of that up, but to be painstakingly careful in these small drawings to get each building right down to the number of windows and figures drawn to the popular scale on the sidewalk, horses, covered wagons. He's what we call a folk artist. Folk art is more concerned with expressing cultural sensibilities and identities rather than fine art aesthetics. You know, in contrast to fine art, folk art is generally characterized by naive style, although by naive we don't mean unsophisticated. But, but traditional values of proportion in the arts may be lacking, and it's not influenced by any kind of academic sensibilities. Although, that's not to undo the, some of the sophistication of George Simon's art. What I think is very interesting is, is the painting that the Dodge House owns of the first mail carrier which is a conglomerate painting of several of his drawings. You can see the drawings individually, and then he used those to create a larger image of early 1850s Omaha. Though he spent most of his time in this region, George Simons traveled extensively, drawing and painting as he went. His time in the army would take him um, into Atlanta, and then down to the coast, ultimately to Galveston. And then somehow, and we don't know how, um, Mr. Simons got on a ship and went to Panama City. And some of the earliest images anywhere of Panama City are in his hand. His probably best and most brilliant and sophisticated painting, which the Dodge House owns, is of Hetch Hetchy Valley with some buffalo going through um, the water. His ability to draw perspective, to render geometry 
from uh, the proper elevation was extraordinary. His drawings, particularly of structures, um, houses, buildings, mills, a fortress, things like that, he saw very truly. The art was not about them, it was all about their subject. These drawings of his bring to life the life of the people we're living at the time. He, he really is the common man in so many ways. Well, I think people often forget that they were living the life just you have now, but in their times, documenting it day in and day out. They're not, they're not a, a figure of legend. These are real people, and they're just like you and me, and they were producing art. One of the main reasons art exists is to document either a thought, uh, a concept, history in the moment, much like photography and you can learn from them. History is never truly lost until it's forgotten. And preserving that history is our mission. The Historical Society of Pottawatomie County in Council Bluffs, Iowa.